Ladies and gentlemen, Dick Van Dyke. The angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is with you. Blessed. Are you among women? But when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and wondered what manner of greeting this was. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you found favor with God. And you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus.
those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. So all went to be registered, everyone in his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and the lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, who was with child. And so it was, while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered, and she brought forth her firstborn son, wrapped him in swaddling clothes, laid him in the manger because there was no room for them at the end. shepherds living in the field, keeping watch over their flocks by night. 
And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them. And the glory of the Lord shone all about them. And they were greatly afraid. And the angel said unto them, Do not be afraid, for I bring you tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. shepherds rose to follow the star as it shone in the east, when suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men.
Now, so it was, when the angels had gone away from them into heaven, then the shepherds said to one another, let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that's come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came with haste, and they found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger. Now when they had seen him, they made widely known the saying which was told of them concerning this child. What child is this who lay to rest on Mary's lap is sleeping? Whom angels greet with anthem sweet while shepherds watch our king. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem saying, Where is he who is born the king of the Jews? We have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. Then Herod, when he had secretly called the wise men, determined from them what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the young child. And when you have found him, bring back word that I may come and worship him also.
when they heard the king, they departed, and behold, the star which they had seen in the east went before them, till it came and stood over where the young child was. And when they came to the house, they saw the young child and Mary his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented gifts to him, gold, frankincense, and myrrh.
Like the wise men and the shepherds of over 2,000 years ago, we pause tonight to remember the child sleeping in the night and his eternal promise of goodness and of light. child of a peasant woman. He grew up in still another village where he worked as a carpenter till he was 30. And then for three years, he was an itinerant preacher. Never wrote a book, never held an office, never had a family or owned a house. He didn't go to college, never visited the big city never traveled more than 200 miles from the place where he was born. He did none of the things usually associated with greatness. He had no credentials but himself. He was turned over to his enemies and went through the mockery of a trial. He was 
nailed to a cross between two thieves. And while he was dying, his executioners gambled for his clothing, the only property he had on this earth. And when he died, he was laid in a borrowed grave through the pity of a friend. Over 20 centuries have come and gone, and today, the central figure of the human race, and he is the leader of mankind's progress. All the armies that ever marched, all the navies that ever sailed, all the parliaments that ever sat, all the kings that ever reigned, put together, have not affected the life of man on this earth as much as that one solitary life. of years have passed, we still celebrate the birthday of that babe in Bethlehem. For unto us a child is born, for unto us a son is given, and the government will rest upon his shoulders, and his name shall be Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. Ladies and gentlemen, because of the inclement weather, we will pause for just a few minutes. We hope to, remo we hope to resume in just a couple of minutes. Thank you. Need for rain? <laughs> Come on. So you will take a short pause as we celebrate rain, and then we'll celebrate this. <laughs>
ladies and gentlemen, we extend our sincere thanks to the Candlelight Choir. The Voices of Liberty. Our featured soloists and guitarists. Our sign language interpreter. The Candlelight Orchestra, Bell Choir, and Fanfare Trumpeters. Our conductor, Nancy Sulahian. And tonight's special guest narrator, Dick Van Dyke. Wasn't that magnificent? Oh, what an evening. I'm overwhelmed. I just want to say it's an honor and a thrill for me to share this evening with you, this great candlelight ceremony. You know, there are many traditions and many, many ways to celebrate this season. And however you and your loved ones decide to do it, we wish you the peace and hope and joy. And would you pray with me for a great wave of tolerance and forgiveness to sweep over this world and give us the peace we yearn for. God bless.